so much for joining today's webinar. We're speakers from Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing, Colinar, and Steriline will discuss a media fill validation approach to flexible filling lines. My name is Sarah and I'll be your host for today. Before we get into today's event, I do wanna let you know that we welcome your questions at any point during this webinar. To ask a question, select the word bubble that appears in the toolbar at the right-hand side of your screen, write in your question and click send. Our off-screen moderator will source those questions for our speakers to answer. Today from Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing, we have CEO, Sean Kinney, Vice President of Manufacturing, Tyler Rush, and QC Microbiology Manager, Lindsay Lundgren. From Colinar, we have CEO, Bern Stroder, and from Steriline, we have Program Manager, Vera Uboldi. Today, our speakers will discuss many topics, including how to design a media fill for flexible fillers, expected challenges and solutions to these, and what benefit this approach brings to BSM and its clients. To get started, I would like to invite Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing CEO, Sean Kinney, to talk. Sean, why are we discussing media fills today? Hi, Sarah. We are discussing media fills because we are designing the aseptic media fill for a very unique filling line. The filling line is fully isolated based, fully automated, and has extreme flexibility. This line will be able to automatically fill vials, cartridges, or syringes. It can process multiple sizes, including RTU and bulk vials. The line also includes a lyophilization capability. When you have flexibility like this, it can be making validating the line complex. In September, we talked about how you can validate a complex filling line that has multiple pieces of equipment from multiple suppliers. Our staff discussed FATs, SATs, IQs, OQs, but we did not talk about performance qualification piece of the validation because it is complicated. That's what we hope to share in this seminar. Thanks, Sean. That's a great introduction into today's topic. Um, I want to ask you, how are performance qualifications performed for sterile filling lines? And why is it more complex to qualify this filling line, this flexible filling line? Yes, that's a good question. A performance qualification verifies the system performs as expected under real operating conditions. It will require demonstrating that the entire line functions correctly together to produce fill product in all containers for which it is designed. This will require demonstrating that each individual piece of equipment performs as to specifications that combine they collectively perform to requirements and ultimately that sterile product can be produced. The ultimate PQ test of a sterile filling line is the media qualification of the line. Media which supports microbial growth, usually tryptocase soy broth, is used to simulate worst case operations in filling operations. If microbial contamination were present in the filling operation, the media filled units would show signs of microbial growth, that, that is cloudiness in the media following incubation under the right temperature. Best practice for qualifying a filling line is to perform the worst case scenarios to truly challenge the filling line. All operations that are performed during a fill should be simulated focusing especially on those that might create a greater risk of sterility failures. For example, corrective, interac corrective interactions that might be required if there was an equipment issue or failure would require an operator to perform some physical activity to correct the problem. The length and duration of the media fill should be of sufficient length to demonstrate that the longest production runs anticipated would still be in a sterile environment. Indeed, the longer the run, the greater the likelihood of contaminants that could be introduced or accumulated. Additionally, the challenge should include all inherent interventions, those interventions that are normally performed and required in filling operations, such as weight checks, adding additional components, microbiological monitoring, and etc. Currently at BSM, we have two flexible isolator-based filling lines, a manual line and a semi-automated line. Each fills vials, cartridges and syringes and the semi-automated line also has lyophilization capability. Our semi-automated filling line uses an XY filling platform to fill all container types, even bulk vials, which are deep hydrogenated in stainless steel nests. If you look at these containers for a bird's eye view from the top, as they progress through the filling system that they are all handled the same. They all have circular openings in an XY format presented to the filling and stoppering tools. The process is the same or very similar across container types and sizes. RTU containers enter from a no-touch transfer wraps, 
weather vials, cartridges, or syringes, and ball files enter from a deep origination oven. From this point, they are all handled the same. Operators load the filler with a nest, and the nested containers are filled and stoppered automatically. The only difference between container types and sizes in this filling is the diameter of the container opening and the number of containers in each tray. Media fills don't require filling every container type and possible size. We look at worst case scenarios, which involve the smallest container opening diameter and the largest container opening diameter. These are assessed in our media fills and they validate all the other containers that are at or in between these sizes. Every container type and size is not filled. Only those that bracket container types and filling stopper and processes. With the largest opening diameter of 22 millimeters, such as the 10R vials, and these have fewer vials per tray, therefore you have more trays to introduce into the system to handle in the isolators, hence more operator involvement. Largest opening containers represent a challenge because the likelihood of a contaminant getting inside in one if the contaminants are present is greater. Small diameter containers also present a challenge because if there is a larger number of containers per tray, for instance with two R's up to 132 per tray, this leads to an overall larger open area in a tray than the 20 millimeter containers. Stoppering processes are evaluated. Stopper operations are the simplest with standard vial stoppering and more complicated and challenging with vacuum stoppering, such as is performed with syringes, cartridges, and vials that are evacuated and purged with nitrogen and then stoppered. All these vacuum processes use very similar tools, but the vials are most challenging. Container introduction is either RTU through a RABS or bulk glass vials through a deep origination oven. Both processes are simulated in media fills. Both lyophilization and liquid fills are challenged by filling approximately one half the containers as a liquid fill and the other half simulated as lyophilization. Greater than 10,000 units are included in every media fill. Perhaps the most challenging process that could introduce contamination into a filling line is the introduction of RTU containers. Bulk containers are introduced directly from a deep hydrogenation oven into the isolator, ensuring they are sterile. With RTU containers, outer layer of bags are removed as they are passed into the loading rabs, and then another bag as they enter the isolator. Although this method can be very successful, if not performed properly, could introduce contaminants, and is perhaps the weakest process in the isolator in terms of sterility assurance. To simulate longer RTU filling operations, empty but sterilized and triple wrapped RTU bins are introduced. This is a weak process which has been eliminated in our new line with the introduction of a pulse light decontamination system for RTU containers. The media approach with our fully automated line will be similar to what I have described above, but I will leave that to Tyler to present. Thanks, Sean. You're right, we need to leave the best for last. I have both Steriline and Colinar on air today. Although neither of them are involved in the performance qualification, they will give a brief overview on the operating modes for the automated filler and the isolator line as a whole and how they are designed to protect sterility, which is, of course, a big concern in fill finish. So I'd first like to start with Verda from Steriline. Um, Vera, can you tell us about the flexibility of this isolator and how it was designed with sterility assurance in mind? Of course, Sarah. All Sterilines isolators are built with sterility in mind. BSM's line will have an extreme amount of flexibility and we will have multiple operating modes possible. Only the chambers that are involved in the filling process will be vhp and the pressure cascades will be adjusted accordingly. A pressure cascade is creating by adjusting the airflow and the turnover rates in each isolator chamber in order to create pressure differentials. This ensures that the contamination flows from the clean areas to the less clean areas and never in reverse. As a matter of fact, the chambers that will need to remain the cleanest will have the highest pressure. 
Then the chambers that are connected to the cleanest chamber will have a slightly lower pressure. In this way, contamination will never flow from the less clean area to the cleanest chamber. Now, I'll go through each of the operating modes with BSM's line and demonstrate how they work. First, I'll demonstrate the liquid vial filling in bulk vials. BSM has got one chamber with a fully flexible filler that can fill all the different kind of container types in the center of their sterile filling line. They also have two unique entrances. One is for bulk vials and the second one is for the ready to use containers. If BSM were to perform a liquid fill in bulk vials, the bulk vials would be loaded here, where they pass first through a vial washer and then in a depurogenation tunnel. Secondly, the bulk vials will be collected at a rotating table and then enter the filling isolator on a conveyor belt. A robotic arm will nest these containers into a pre-sterilized nest. It will load the nest onto the filler, fill and stoppers the containers. The nest would be removed by a second arm, unloaded onto a conveyor belt that would lead the bulk vials to an exit wrap containing a capper. Prior to filling, BSM will block the ready-to-use container entrance and the entrance of the lyophilizer, as well as all the entrance and exit routes. They will run a VHP cycle in just the isolator chambers shown here. After this, the, the pressure cascade will look like this, where the dark blue is the cleanest area and the light blue is the, most, the less clean area. The cleanest area is also the highest pressurized isolator chamber. The highest pressure chamber in this case is the filling isolator because in this chamber the product is exposed. The pressure drops as you get further away from this chamber. Also the depuregenation tunnel has three chambers within it and you can see that they are all pressurized uh, differently too. In the case of liquid fill in ready-to-use vials, the ready-to-use bins enter through an entity system. Then they go through an RTU tab decontamination system where all the surfaces are sanitized. Secondly, the tab enters into the lead liner chamber where a robot removes first the lead and then the liner. The bin will finally exit into the filling chamber where the first robot arm will remove the nest and place it in the filler. After filling, the second robot arm will remove the nest and the nest devices on the conveyor belt where they can travel to the capper. Again, prior to filling, BSM will block off the bulk vial entrance and the entrance to the lyophilizer as well as all the entrance and exit traps. They will then run a VHP cycle in just the isolator chambers shown here. After this process, the VHP will be removed and the isolator line will remain with the pressure cascade which is shown here. As you can see, again, the filling chamber is the cleanest and therefore the most pressurized chamber and then the pressure decreases as we get further away from this filling chamber. The case of the liquid fills in ready-to-use syringes and cartridge is very similar to the one of bulk vials. They go through the same entrance, but they exit through an exit rubs directly attached to the filling isolator. Only the chambers shown here are dhp would and the pressure cascade for a syringe or a cartridge will look like this, where, again, the filling isolator is the most pressurized chamber. The filling line of BSM also has a lyophilization capability. If we were going to load the lyo, we would VHP the diverting isolator chamber and the lyo loading and unloading chamber, in addition to the rest of the line which is in use. 
The mouse hole to the cutter will remain closed, even during the filling and the layer loading. The pressure cascade for either an RTU or a bulk via layer fill will look like this. As you can see, the filling chamber is still the most pressurized chamber. But then the diverting chamber, which is directly attached to the filling chamber, has got a lower pressure than the layer loading chamber. This is because the vials are open to the environment and we need to ensure that the layer loading station remains clean. The vials, yes, are open also when they are in the diverting chamber, but the amount of time that they spend in the layer loading chamber is higher, and this creates an higher risk for the containers. So we are going to pressurize the chamber in order to prevent the contamination from the diverting chamber into the layer loading chamber. Finally, we are going to see the layer unloading. After the lyophilizer is run, we need to remove the containers. Only the layer loading and unloading chambers and the diverting chambers are VHP'd. The wires are unloaded, they are stoppered, they pass through the diverting chamber and they exit to the rubs containing a cupper. The pressure cascades of these two chambers is going to look like this, with the most pressurized chambers being the layer loading and unloading chamber. Sara, this is all I have to share today. Thank you, Verda. Next, I'd like to invite Bern Stroder from Colonar to speak. Bern, can you tell us how this filler is designed to protect sterility yet remain flexible? Hi, Sarah, of course. This filling system is designed to be able to fill syringes, cartridges, and vials entirely automatically. We are using the same XY filler used on BSM's SEMA automated line, but we are pairing it with two robotic arms that will load and unload the filler. These robotic arms will also load bulk vials into nests, load the nests onto the filler, then after filling occurs, remove the nest and load the bulk vials onto a conveyor belt. The nests will then be passed back to the first robot to be loaded again. In terms of protecting sterility, we just mentioned one, automation. Operator interventions will always increase the risk of sterility failures, and by using robots instead, we reduce these risks. We also designed the filling system to be mindful of laminar flow. We have mostly unimpeded laminar flow on the open containers inside the isolator, and we have also programmed the robots to avoid breaking that laminar flow. The filling system is easy to clean and all surfaces are made of materials that can be sterilized by VHP and are easy to access for the VHP. We have minimized the exposure time for the drug product by immediately placing a stopper or plunger after filling the container. And we used advanced static and motion sealing techniques to ensure proper isolation. Thank you, Byrne. Next, I will now invite uh, Tyler Rush from Berkshire Sterile to speak. Tyler, can you tell us the performance qualification plan for this new line? Hi, Sarah. Yes, I can. The plan will work a lot of what we do on the semi-automated line. We'll be taking the same bracketing approach, filling a media lot of the smallest container diameter, a 13 millimeter, which will likely be a 2R vial, and filling a media fill and the largest neck container diameter of 20 millimeter, which will probably be a 10 R vial. We'll be filling, filling half of each media fill lot as bulk vials entering from one entrance and the other half as RTU vials entering from the other entrance to challenge both entrances. We'll perform normal stoppering motions as well as simulated nitrogen purging to challenge the normal stoppering plunging techniques and nitrogen purging techniques. We'll also load the lyophilizer run a shortened cycle that will pull a vacuum on the containers but does not freeze the media and remove the containers to be capped. We will run the filler very fast and very slow and we will introduce several empty RTU bins that are pre-sterilized and triple bagged to introduce more interventions and extend the filling time. All this work will challenge every part of this slide and, will be, and that will be used when we fill. Whether it's a vial, a syringe, a cartridge fill, whether we're using bulk or RTU containers, and whether we lawfulize the product or if we're performing nitrogen purging. 
everything will be captured in these two media fields. In terms of units filled and the total runtime, we are looking to fill into up to 25,000 vials for each media fill, and the line will likely run up to three days. Tyler, I know you made this process sound so simple, but how will you run the VHP cycles and what will the pressure cascades look like in this filling line for a fill like this? Uh, because like Verita said, we don't have um, a cascade, a pressure cascade or a VHP cycle set up for the entire line, and you're gonna be using the entire line for your um, performance qualification. That's a good question. We don't have a VHP cycle or pressure cas cascade set up for the entire line. You need to pick one of the entrances to VHP and the other entrance must, re entrance must remain closed off. How we'll be getting around this will be closing off the RTU container entrance and VHP in the bulk file entrance. The filling isolator and the diverting isolator, lyo loading and unloading isolator. We will then fill a number of units and they will enter the lyo. After we've loaded the lyo, we will close off the lyo, change the pressure cascades, cascade and open the door to the capper and begin performing, li performing liquid filling of bulk files only. And this is, as this is occurring, we will VHP the RTU container entrance. This won't affect the fill because the mouse holes will be sealed. Once we have completed the number of bulk files we need to fill, we will seal off the bulk file entrance, change the pressure cascade, and unseal the RTU entrance, and begin filling the RTU files. In this way, we will challenge the entire system without requiring a new pressure cascade or VHP cycle to be created. Thank you, Tyler. Since we are talking about media fills and sterility, I thought we should get a microbiology perspective. So today from Berkshire Sterile, we have QC microbiology manager, Lindsay Lundgren, available to talk. Lindsay, can you tell us how media fills are evaluated and what environmental monitoring is done? Absolutely. In terms of envir environmental monitoring, we perform both viable and non-viable monitoring in each isolator chamber that's in use. So we'll keep a plate and a particle counter in each chamber. The plates will be changed over every hour and the particle counter in the filling isolator will be within 12 inches of the filling needle. All this monitoring is continuous. Once filling is complete, we'll plate each glove, which means we'll place all five fingers on one plate using one plate for each glove. We'll also plate product contact spots such as fill needle and stopper insertion tool. There will be others or other plating involved, and we, but we're still in the process of developing that plan. All the plates are incubated for three to five days at 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, and they're then pulled and observed for growth. Non-viable monitoring, on the other hand, is instantaneous, and the limits are set based on ISO and EU requirements. This is pretty much all of the environment, environmental monitoring performed for the isolator. Um, to determine if a media fill is acceptable, we need to see no growth. After all of the units are filled, each filled unit is inspected for seal integrity. Assuming they're all sealed properly, they will then be incubated at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius for seven days. The units are then removed and inspected for changes in turbidity. This means we're looking to see if the solution turned foggy, which would indicate a contaminated unit. If the lot is completely clear, they're then incubated at 30 to 35 degrees Celsius for seven days. At the end of this incubation period, they're inspected again. If all samples are completely clear, then the media fill has passed. If even one unit is not clear, then the media fill fails and an investigation is launched. Thankfully, we've never had a media fill fail, and we don't expect one to. Thank you, Lindsay. It looks like we have reached the end of today's presentation. In just a moment, we will transition to the Q&A portion of this webinar. Again, to ask a question, select the word bubble that appears in the toolbar at the right-hand side of your screen. An area to type in your question will appear. Write us a question and then hit send, and we will display those for our speakers to answer. I'm going to give everyone a moment to put in their questions. Um, in the meantime, uh, today's webinar is the sixth webinar of this series, The Future of Small-Scale Sterile Filling. We have one more upcoming event that we, all, that we invite you to join. We also have recordings of all of our previous webinars available and online, and you can view all of these past and future topics here. In January, we will be airing our next webinar regarding the VHP validation approach to this multi-chamber and complex filling line. Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing and Steriline will both be available to discuss how you can validate a complex isolator line, the challenges to VHP validation, and solutions to overcome these. 
Following the end of this event, I will send you an email with a sign-up link to this event, but you can also go um, and sign up directly by going to berkshirestereomanufacturing.com slash the future of small-scale sterile filling, and both past and present events will be listed there for you to register to. Okay, it looks like we have received all the questions we are going to get, so let's get started with that first question. So, uh, Lindsay, this one will go to you. What if environmental monitoring fails, but the media fill doesn't? So if environmental, environmental monitoring fails, but the media field doesn't. Um, essentially, you know, if we find growth on a plate, we will launch an excursion investigation as we would for anything else. Um, we perform our investigation, try to determine root cause, look at all of the different factors that could um, be played into the isolator, the, the media, etc. And then we'd determine product impact. So essentially, if the media fill doesn't have any contaminated units, we do you know 100% inspection like we discussed. And if none of those were positive, then there was essentially zero product impact. So the media fill would still pass, but we would have that environmental excursion to show that we did look into what possibly could have caused a growth on a plate, but the media fill would pass. Thank you, Lindsay. This next one will go to Tyler. Um, the question is, why do you change the filling speed during a media fill? The reason that's important to change the filling speed during the media fill is each media simulation needs to simulate real world conditions. Uh, slow media fill, during slow media fill, the vials will be open uh, to the environment inside the isolator for the longest period of time. Uh, for a high speed uh, fill during the media fill, the, the motions of the machine are at their most dramatic. And again, that can be considered a worst case condition uh, for filling. Thanks, Tyler. I have another one for you. The question is, do you perform interventions such as a needle change during the media fill? There are two kinds of intervention, interventions that we include in every media fill. They're inherent interventions uh, which are routine interventions that you that occur during any routine fill, such as uh, uh, transferring vials into the isolator or uh, filling the stopper bowl, uh, and those are preset and uh, occur a specific number of times during the media fill. And then there are what we call qualified interventions, which are not interventions that occur routinely but have occurred in the past. And we want to make sure that these interventions are simulated in the aseptic process. So those would include changing of a fill needle or staging in some extra material that is not routinely needed. Sean, uh, this one can be answered by you. Uh, someone had asked, I understand that BSM has two different pump systems for filling. Which one is used for media fills? Yes, BSM has two different pump systems for filling, a piston pump and peristaltic pumps. And in our media fills, we use both pump systems. One pump system is used for the first half of the fill and the second pump is used for the second half of the fill. This allows us to enable, or this allows us to utilize the two different pumps to demonstrate that we can assemble and utilize those pumps without affecting the quality of the media fill. That's great. We will end on that question. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone that joined today's webinar and a thank you to our speakers, Sean Kinney, Tyler Rush, Lindsay Lundgren, Vera Uboldi, and Bern Stroder. Thank you for your input in today's event. To all of our viewers that are here, keep your eye out for my email and don't forget to sign up for our other events, which you can do by going to berkshiresterilemanufacturing.com slash the future of small scale sterile filling. I want to give a special thanks to the following three companies, Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing, Colinar, and Steriline. They put a lot of time and effort into making today's event a success. So with that, we'll end there, and we hope to see you at the next event.